Hello and a warm welcome back to my YouTube channel. Trust you're all well and in good spirits. We're going to today have a look at the examiner's report for May 2020, which is the most recent one available for internal assessments. Hopefully this is of use to both teachers and students in compiling their internal assessments for May 21. Okay. The beginning of the report tells us that it is still most common to think about uh, vitamin C and the amount of vitamin C in probably in fruits or in some vegetables, uh, uncommonly in some tablets, because that would be the wrong thing to do as we'll come to very shortly. Um, looking at calcium contents, iron contents, do that by colorimetry, thiocyanate, um, EDTA titration. Um, and the effect of temperature on the contents of iron or calcium or vitamin C uh, can score very well. They're, they're, they're fine if they are done very well, of course. Uh, see my previous videos of how to achieve that. Calorimetry still uh, was very popular, so I'm assuming that's to do with the effect of carbon chain length on energy content, uh, maybe even extending that to some biodiesel investigations and then looking at how um, effective or how energy uh, efficient they can be and, and of course galvanic cells galvanic cells are great you can vary the concentration you can use the nernst equation and you can get some great great results maybe even 24 on your internal assessment so if the independent variable was continuous i.e we could uh, measure it and we could plot a graph from the results then something like that with some error bars on there would score very well okay um, if you then you do a ruler and you plotted a gradient of that line you did your rise over your run down here that's brilliant we really like that okay um, worth mentioning again brand comparisons do not score well they do not score well and when I moderate, I'm still surprised to find that um, teachers are allowing, and students are still going on with, um, how much aspirin is in this tablet, or how much um, paracetamol, or how much iron even. We still get that now and again. Why is that not good? Well, I've mentioned in previous videos, it's not good because the school laboratory can never hope, not a hope, snowball in hell's chance of finding the same level of sophistication of a well-resourced industrial laboratory which has been validated to release these products to humans for their consumption. Don't forget medicines are ingested on complete trust of what is on the package and having worked in pharmaceuticals and other levels of trust that you need to have and have to validate for your systems um, to make your medicine able to be marketed to the public. Don't ever think and students still seem to write this, that, that they found that the paracetamol only had uh, 50 milligrams when it should have been 120 milligrams. All that shows is the poor technique or the poor um, sophistication of the school laboratory in comparison to an industrial laboratory. So if you're comparing with the label still, it's about high time you stopped. Okay. Um, databases, we saw a lot more databases last year. Don't forget, this is when schools were we're kind of at beginning to mid COVID pandemic sort of time. Um, certainly an increase in databases and um, simulations was observed during the May 2020 sitting for internal assessment. I love the fact that they mentioned the positional isomerism on the NMR shift because I included that in my previous database video. And I think that was a lady called Kathleen Quinn, the IB chemistry teacher Facebook group. So we have her to thank, perhaps. So if it's not, tell me who it was, <laughs> and we'll give them some credit. Okay. Overall strengths, the IAs contained some clear research questions, and safety was done quite well. The raw data was in proper tables, tables with, with headings. So we saw um, we had uh, trial one, two, three, 
and we might have temperature in degrees C plus or minus 0 0.1 degrees C for instance. So that's very nice. We like to see raw data presented in tables with units. Don't forget your units. You're not going to get marks for your uh, analysis or your exploration or indeed your communication. Perhaps your personal engagement sucks as well. So make sure you put your units in your raw data table. Um, the reset question, when it was answered in the evaluation part and linked to data produced, that was good. That was seen as a clear strength. If you're not doing that yet, it's time to start. Um, linking procedural weakness with improvements. If you look at the Andrew Wang YouTube channel, he has a beautiful video on how you do internal assessments and you will uh, tabulate your weakness with the improvements and perhaps the effect on your overall data. And that's how you achieve the higher bands in evaluation. And then communication was, was good when there were some nice titles, nice graphs, uh, tables and uh, sections throughout the IA. Weaknesses. So a superficial discussion of results, things like it went well or I enjoyed this practical. Nobody cares. Okay. What we do care about is that the chemistry was good, well-researched, correct, wide-ranging, well-referenced. All those things are great. Not recognizing limitations in range of the independent variable and the sources of systematic error. So again, evaluation is the most difficult part of the IA to score well on because it requires those higher order thinking skills about reflection, about looking at the systematic and random errors, but more of that later. Uncertainties were in many cases poorly executed, poorly done. Okay, they may have just been included in a table heading and then not propagated correctly, or maybe they were not added up correctly. There are lots of mathematical errors present, present in IAs, which are sent for moderation. Background research. It should not be the, uh, I don't know, the food journal of Wisconsin that we're <laughs> learning about how wonderful vitamin C is at improving skin condition. Nobody cares. Well, I don't care, and I'm a moderator. What I do care about are the redox processes behind that. What I do care about is the chemistry. And in a chemistry internal assessment, you will only get marks for chemistry not for the effect on the uh, freshness and vibrancy of your eyes after ingesting vitamin C. We don't care, because that's nonsense. Okay, um, other weaknesses were uh, little reflection on poor method and subsequent altering. I've mentioned this before, and clear a wonderful thing for any student to do in an IA is to say, I explored my research question, I did a range of five independent variables at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 degrees C, for example, and it just didn't work. It didn't work. But put that down. Say it didn't work. I tried it, and then I reflected, and I changed my temperatures to, I don't know, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, minus 20, minus 10. The biggest range was found in 0 to 10, so I did 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This, this reflection and reaction phase seems to be omitted from many IAs, which would immediately bump those IAs up into the next bands on personal engagement, exploration, potentially even on analysis. Okay, so reflection throughout. This is the IB. They care about reflection and higher order thinking. Okay, let's look at the specifics. So personal engagement, nearly everyone scored one mark. Well done. You only dropped one mark. One way of looking at it. There's still too much reliance on the personal angle, still too much since I was a little boy or girl I've been really interested in the effect of temperature on the voltage in a galvanic cell. No you weren't. <laughs> you just weren't. Okay. So how do you get to... Uh, you show genuine interest by having wide research of academic uh, chemical journals, of uh, New Scientist, Nature magazine. Universities have so much free stuff on the internet right now, it would be a crying shame to not actually be using that and using trivial uh, science journals, which we are all familiar with. Quora comes up far too often. Students need to show a thorough grasp of the chemistry behind it, and the chemistry must be correct. We know that you are not going to be 
creating a new cure for headaches. If you do, that'd be fantastic, but it's unlikely. You're going to be, re you're going to be recreating or creating, inventing. Inventing is not in the criteria. Um, investigating is, okay? So whatever you are investigating, there will be reams and reams of textbooks and journals and papers that you can refer to. And if you, if you can't be bothered to do that, don't expect a good mark in personal engagement. And again, your response to problems encountered will show that you were personally engaged in the practical. We know as chemists, it often doesn't work. And when it doesn't work, what has been your response to that will be a fantastic thing to discuss in your internal assessment. Exploration, most in the three, four band. Of course, the world average is 4.2, whatever it is overall for a, for a score. So we'd expect that the internal assessment would reflect that. And indeed, of course, it does. Okay. It works well when you've got a relevant research question. Um, I had one a couple of years ago, which was looking at the amount of sodium hydroxide on hair and how soft the hair became just by touching it. I couldn't believe A, the student was allowed to proceed and B, that the teacher actually submitted it. Um, it should be quantifiable. Quantifiable should be uh, in units. Okay, it could be percent absorbance, transmission, it could be volume in centimeters cubed, temperature in degrees C, Kelvin, doesn't matter. It must be quantifiable. Okay, if it's something vague and non-specific, you're not going to score very well on your whole IA. Okay. Dependent variables scored well. Uh, if it was quantified, again, if it was quantified, and safety was done well, but we'll come to more of that in a little a little while. So weaknesses generally, um, the method didn't test the research question. If somebody was saying, how suitable is iron to treat blood deficiency? And then they looked at the amount of iron in tablets at different temperature, that doesn't answer the research question. Um, so students and indeed teachers need to be more cognizant of things like reliability and validity and how appropriate is the method to actually test the research question. I've seen many IAs where there's a beautiful method, beautiful analysis, and then they can't do the evaluation because the method and the analysis don't bear any relation to the research question as posted. And maybe at that point the teacher could have said, change the research question to reflect the method that you've done but on one too many occasions one too many occasions this has not been the case okay an absence of research and i've mentioned already and an absence of chemistry okay we want to see chemical reactions we want to see formulae we want to see the application of formulae the correct uh, mathematical calculations in the ia all too often we see pages and pages of discussion with no chemistry in there. And again, nobody cares. Okay. You should consider the range and frequency of your independent variable. Why not, before you even go into your method, have a paragraph, this is really good practice, have a paragraph discussing why your method is how it is. How did you choose that range of your IV? Why did you choose that DV? How did you include or not include some of the control variables? That's wonderful for exploration and personal engagement. That's like top bands, top bands. That's where you want to be. Another massive one for me is um, a student might say they're going to look at the effect of concentration on rate of reaction. And one of their control variables, they'll put temperature. Great, well done. But in your method, if it doesn't say how are you going to control that temperature, then you're not going to score more than three, maybe four on exploration. If you say you have a control variable, you need to state how you're going to control it in the method. And even with temperature, that's a classic example. They'll put the thermometer into, yes, trademark mug, they'll put the thermometer into the water bath around the reaction, not in the reaction itself. If they put it in the reaction, they've introduced a systematic error because they have now got solution on their thermometer. Yes, it's an apple pen, um, which will come out from there. So be very careful. If you want more than three or four, you must discuss your control variable in your method. And it was noticed that green chemistry principles were very low. What do we mean by green chemistry? We mean, did you use the least amount of solvents possible, the least amount of solutes possible? 
Um, did you use a temperature range which you could still get a result with which didn't involve using lots of uh, energy to produce that? Um, how did you deal with the waste? Did you use the safest uh, alternative available to study your effective concentration on rates of reaction? Or did you use something exotic and toxic with no viable justification for that? Uh, maybe you did a database and again just state there were no ethical or environmental considerations but clearly ethical and environmental is something which we as teachers and students need to get better for May 21. Analysis, this was poorly done. Analysis range two and three, most students two or three out of six. Okay, that control variable thing again, which I just mentioned, which you need to state in your uh, discussion of variables, I'd suggest around six control variables, see my other videos. Um, that needs to be a new method. And it also has to have the uncertainty associated with the control variable. Otherwise, how can you calculate your uh, errors at the end? We'll have a look at that shortly. Another error, which I couldn't believe when I read the report, is that many schools are still just recording the total volume, 22.30 cm cubed, rather than saying the start volume was 0, 0.00 cm cubed plus or minus 0 0.05 cm cubed, and the end volume was 23.00 cm cubed plus or minus 0 0.05 cm cubed. Total volume, why bother? Waste of time, what's not the initial? We want to know the final, and we want to know the uncertainty in the initial, the uncertainty in the final. And we want those adding up, perhaps propagating as a percentage uncertainty. Another thing uh, schools did, did not so well was plot the average was plotting average was okay, but let's say the research question says effects of concentration on rate of reaction. All too many times we see schools plotting volume in centimeters cubed, volume of the gas uh, that was produced, for instance, or the absorbance. That, that is not the research question. The research question was what's the effect on concentration. So when you see, you see a graph on concentration, they're just plotting the average of the raw data. The average of the raw data does not address the research question. So you're only going to get mid-band marks, probably low mid-band marks. Many occasions as a moderator, we pick up calculation errors. And this is, um, this is catastrophic really. I think it's the only way for it. If there are calculation errors within the analysis, that may well and often does result in an incorrect relationship being concluded. An incorrect relationship not only impacts analysis massively, it means that the evaluation is, is stuffed, it's scuppered, it's sunk because your data is not being analysed properly. That means you're not personally engaged to realise that it was incorrectly done. You've not explored enough to recognize that your data is the wrong way around. And the whole IA is just, the plug is out. So double, triple check your calculations. Uncertainties. Uncertainties is mentioned three times in the examiner's report for 2020. If you want to know how to do uncertainties properly, watch my video on uncertainties. Don't get upset with the results you get with the, from the work you didn't do. It's one of those old adages, you have to do the work before you get the results, right? It's not just going to happen. Do the work. You will, right? Okay. Standard deviation still comes up quite a lot. And standard deviation tends to be used by what students should we call these? Let's call them biology students. Okay, so biology students use standard deviation because they've used it next door in biology. Um, it's not often not justified in chemistry because we have low amounts of collected values. You need to have a big data set to justify standard deviation, 30 different values, when you're only doing it with three or five. It's not valid. It's not a valid treatment, okay? Students also calculate means without recognizing their outliers, and they put all the data in, divided by five or three, whatever they've done, when they should be highlighting the outliers and saying that this uh, is not being included in my calculation of my mean. Another wonderful thing students do is they go onto Excel, click the button, and get the R squared value, the equation for the line, and move on, thinking I've hit the criteria, and uh, they precisely have not. Okay, it's no good having an R squared value. It's no good having an equation for the line. If you're not going to discuss that in either the analysis or later in the evaluation, it's just a meaningless button press, and we recognize that what it is. 
evaluation, this is the hardest one to score on because it's those higher order thinking skills. You have to reflect, you have to do calculations of the errors. You must state the research question and whether it was answered or not. And just to reinforce the point, if you've done poor math or you've got poor data within your IA, to what extent can you actually, sorry, it's a bit too okay there, to what extent can you actually answer your research question? Uncertainties, again, third time it was mentioned in the examiner's report, if you don't know the uncertainty to do with your data and you can only calibrate for your random uncertainty, watch my video, then you're unable to discuss at any length or any detail how effective your research question exploration was in the evaluation. Again, absence of chemistry, often let down evaluations. Um, you need to put it in the context of the chemistry that you are investigating. If 99% of IAs are uh, vitamin C, calcium, iron, calorimetry, galvanic cells, it's all there. There's no excuse for not including the chemistry to do with a chemistry IA. Okay. The high scoring IAs, and I've seen this first time this year, I think, in the examiner's report for May 2020, is delineation into systematic and random errors. Okay. So you need to discuss the magnitude of systematic and random errors. And you can do that by plotting maximum and minimum gradients through your error bars and whether they pass through them or not will determine the magnitude of the systematic and random errors. So we need a fairly sophisticated treatment of error analysis in your evaluation if you want to score the fives and sixes in evaluation. Okay. How do you do that? Watch my video. Okay. Uh, improvements should be method based, not just limited to more repeats. Please put do more repeats. That, that would help the uh, reliability of the data. Um, but you need to be talking about calibrations of the instruments that you have used. You need to be talking about the range of data that you chose, why you chose it, going back to that justification for your method earlier on in your internal assessments. And how could you adapt or change your method to reduce the systematic errors which are inherent in any scientific investigation? So the nature of the equipment, better equipment is a bit superficial. But you could change, I don't know, uh, a burette for an auto titrator or a Carl Fisher apparatus for water content and discuss how, to what extent, that would actually improve this investigation. That's a bit more deep and a bit more chemistry. It all goes back to the chemistry. Okay. So overall, um, your communication, when you read the whole 12-page report, uh, restate some old stuff just in case people have forgot. Uh, it should be clear with worked examples, one worked example for every calculation that you do, even the averaging. It should be 12 pages, no more. If you go a little bit over 12 pages, it's a hazy area. Um, I try and avoid it at all costs. If it's 13 and it's concise, and that's the thing, is it concise? Then maybe that's kind of okay, but there's no requirements to go beyond and read beyond 12 pages for any moderator. We just stop. And some just do stop. Um, irrelevant backgrounds, the research question. Um, if you're looking at pH of soils, I don't suggest you do. This is just one that just came to mind. I don't want to know about the effect of loam on nitrogen uh, fixation or how robust the plant is, for instance. I, uh, nobody cares. Well, chemists don't care. Um, lots of photographs with little purpose. We see that too many times. Lovely picture of a burette and a pipette and a thermometer and a pipette filler and what value, what value. If it doesn't add value, don't include it. We know it's just filler because you're not going to have words to fill the 12 pages. Units, wherever there's a number, be absolutely uh, rigorous about this. Wherever there's a number, it must have consistent decimal places with the uncertainty. And both the number and the uncertainty must have the units associated with them. Either you've been lazy or you just didn't know to do that, but that is going to impact your communication quite significantly, that you can follow basic scientific notation. Use IUPAC for naming all your organic stuff and your oxidation states and all that stuff. Um, 
and references. The references, it's a bit of a pet issue of mine, we want to see academic chemistry references. I don't want to see Quora. I don't want to see the Daily Mail, for instance. Okay. So we now go on to key guidance from the May 2020 report. Lots of more databases, as I said at the beginning. And the examiner's report says for a database, you can extend to four or five different independent variables. I should say IV, not IB. Um, as I've been saying in my database uh, pandemic video. Home chemistry is okay. Again, I don't personally want my kids doing chemistry at home. I'll leave that to individual teachers to um, decide the uh, maturity of their group and what they trust them with. It says that research chemical principles, not answers already known. Okay, so, you, you know, I'm going to explore Faraday's constant and prove that it's 96,485 or whatever it happens to be. We know that. Don't, don't bother. Don't waste your time. Um, but look at the effects of temperature or concentration on the outcomes of a variable. That's, that's, that's fine. That's okay. That's what we want to see. You should explain how your method was decided. I spoke about that earlier in the video, just to reinforce, explain your choices of IV and DV and CV, and maybe include your uncontrolled variables as well. And that's a really nice thing to see. Safety is not enough. It's not enough to go to Hascards. It's not enough to go to the MSDS, the Manufacturer's Safety Data Sheet, and just copy that down. We want to know about the judicious quantities, and you chose the safest most uh, least environmentally damaging material so that you could answer the research question which you have created. I also have a video on research question inspirations. Record the control variable data. If any of your control variables are quantifiable, we want to see a table with the data for the control variable to show that you controlled it. Okay? Um, don't say you're going to control the humidity in the room. I don't know how you would do that. Where would you begin? <laughs> do you have a magic wand? No. Record your control variable data as well as your independent variable and dependent variable data. Data for all, consistent decimal places, uncertainties, if you want the top bands. Compare the magnitude of your systematic versus your random errors. That's a separate video. Maybe I'll make that my next one, but that's what you need to do. And all this bump, all this filler, title pages, appendices, content pages, indexes, bin, throw them in the bin, okay? It doesn't, it keeps being asked, does it count towards your page count? Just don't do it. Just don't do it. That's not even a question, okay? Just don't do it. I want 12 pages of chemistry, okay? I want to see the research question, not even your name now. Introduction, a few sentences, off you go. Show your personal engagement. Show that you can explore. Show that you're involved throughout. Reflect on your method. Show how you changed the method. Be consistent with decimal places. Tabulate correctly. Worked examples for each equation, calculation. Um, refer back to methodolo methodological, if I can say that, methodological issues in your evaluation. And discuss the magnitude of your systematic and your random errors. These are all wonderful things to get you to that magic 24 out of 24, which I also have a video about. Okay, I hope you found that useful. I certainly did, looking at the examiner's report for 2020. This is primarily aimed at May 21 students, as I said at the beginning. So best of luck with your studies. I hope you found this useful. Go away, have a cup of tea, come back, have a look at one more video. Don't forget, subscribe at the bottom, smash that subscribe button. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.